Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we created a FPS counter as well as updated our enemy texture, which uh, I control Z'd again, just like the beginning of last episode and undid that. So if we exit out, we still have the FPS at least. I didn't undo that. And in the game, I'm gonna change this back again to, what was it, enemy floating, enemy floating one. Oops, two enemy floating one and like i promised last time we are going to implement text into our game this episode i know exciting right i need to like find a free to use cheer sound to put in the video there uh so that's going to help us do a few things first off if you want you can draw the fps to the screen obviously if you don't want to check the console every time uh this episode what we're going to be doing though is we're going to be drawing the player lives and the player cash so, so far we've been tracking the cache inside of the console, and that is obviously not very conducive to a fun playing experience, seeing as people that don't run the game in Eclipse can't know how much money they have. So we're gonna draw that in the screen as well as the amount of lives in the screen. So let's exit that out. And the way we're gonna do this is inside of the UI class. Now we might implement it into the menu class eventually, but for right now, uh, we're just gonna put it in the main UI. So we need to make a couple new variables. Private true type font font and private font name it AWT font. Okay. So these aren't actually going to be two separate fonts. It's just two different classes to help us draw to the screen. So we're going to import this. Make sure you import it from newdon.slick. Remember that's the uh, utility we downloaded in episode one to help us draw textures. They also help us with font, how nice of them. And then font is actually an, uh, an inbuilt Java library. So you wanna import the java.awt. Make sure you don't import the, the slick one for that. That's why I named it awt font. So import java.awt for that one. And they have warning to not being used. When we initiate our UI in the constructor here, uh, we're gonna make awt font equal new font and it takes a font name for the first argument. Now, you wanna make sure it's one that not only you have installed on your system, but one that everyone probably has installed. Uh, eventually, we'll get custom fonts where you have to include them in your resources folder so that everyone that gets the game has the same font. Uh, but for right now, just use one that everyone has. So I'll go ahead and do Times New Roman, classic. The next argument is the font style, which is an enum, so we'll do font.bold. And after that is the font size. Now we'll probably eventually want to pass in the size as an argument every time we write it so we can draw different sizes of font. Uh, but for right now, we'll just do default uh, 24. And then we're gonna initialize our font equals new true type font. And that takes the font we just made as an argument. So AWT font, and then a true or false for anti-aliasing. Uh, we'll go into that later, but right now we'll do false. Okay, that's the entire setup that we need for our font. Uh, so now we can just call font.drawString. I'll show you right here, font.drawString. That's the method we use to draw on the screen. So let's make a method for that in our UI class called public void draw string. And it will take, a, um, we'll use integer. Yeah, we'll use integers, why not? Int x int y and a string for the text that we want to draw and we're going to call draw string now this uses floats but it shouldn't give us any trouble here oops not front font dot draw string pass an x y and text okay easy enough right now in our game class let's go ahead and we step our ui I think when we update our UI, because we call it every time we draw the screen and draw the UI, uh, after gameui.draw, we are going to call draw string. So gameui.draw string, and we'll set it at zero, zero, and let's just try out a hello world just to see if it worked. Save it, run it, play. Hello world. Now we got text on the screen. Not as hard as uh, you might think, huh? 
Now, the reason I said maybe 10 or 15 episodes ago or a while back that it was going to be kind of difficult to do fonts and I wasn't sure exactly how we were going to do it is because eventually I'd like to do bitmap fonts. And so basically what that is is using textures for each letter. So we can do custom fonts like made in Photoshop or something similar that really go with the aesthetic of our game. Uh, but for now, we'll just use the default fonts that come with Windows or OS, whatever, what have you. So go ahead and exit that out now. And we are left with gameui.drawstring at 00, zero hello world. Now, obviously, that's not very helpful because it's static and it doesn't show us anything other than hello, unless you kind of want to put that in your game. That's cool, too. But what I'm really interested in is showing variables. Now, that is just as easy as you'd imagine. We are going to first off move the X and the Y over to the menu. Now, this is what I was saying earlier, how we might just create the strings via the menu. And then when we update the, the UI and update the menu, it'll just automatically draw it for us. Because right now, we need to do a little bit of uh, arbitrary number picking here. Uh, our menu begins at 1280x, so I probably want it to be at 1310, I guess. Uh, for Y, I'll do 400. And the text is going to be lives, space, and then player dot lives. Uh, we call it with a capital P because it's a static variable in our player class. Cash and lives are both static integers. Um, where were we? Game. Lives, player at lives. Now, before we try it out, we're going to go ahead and also make the cache. Game UI dot draw string at 1340. What was the last Y? I can't see because it's hidden. We'll say 500 Y. And this can be cache plus player dot cache. Now, this should be updated because it's called every time we update the UI. So we'll see. It's going to run that and see what happens. Hit play. And there we go. Why is the... Uh, oh, I moved the X for some reason. Anyways, uh, lives 10, cache 200. Now does it change when we hit a tower? It does. So cache goes down. Cache 185. Uh, it costs 15 for each of these towers here. And it should cost more, I think, for this tower. Yeah, 20 for that. And it should go back up when we kill an enemy. It does. Now, unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to test the lives because I made such a great defense in my towers. So we're going to let the enemies go through this time and make sure the lives updates. Uh, after that, we're going to move the cache to the left. And, you know, I'm not going to spend... I'm not going to waste you guys' time like moving this around because obviously you're going to want to put it where you want to put it. Uh, and you can change the font inside the UI class or the, the font and also the font size and kind of just make this look however you want to make it look. Uh, lives does go down. Cool. So even though we weren't tracking lives really in the console or anywhere and the cache really wasn't fleshed out, um, it's cool that they both actually work. We already made those tracking mechanisms to track the lives and track the, the cache. So that is how you draw strings, draw text in our game. Pretty easy, right? Uh, we're going to add some more text for maybe tower cost when we hover over it and uh, other similar things. The website uh, is coming along, or it should be, I say, in the future. I'm not actually sure, but I hope by this point you're watching this, the website is coming along. And what I want to do is create a change log. So that'll allow us to kind of look back. Uh, luckily, I have a copy of the game for every episode due to patreon.com slash indie programming. But uh, a change log will allow us to look at which episode we made which changes. So people that are either joining in now or looking back or just want specific advice on certain issues can just kind of control F and go through that and uh, search through all the changes we made to our game. Also just kind of looks more professional and it's cool to look back and see what we've made progress on. All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Remember, for just a quarter, what is it? For just 23 cents a day, you can see next episode already. Ooh, such value. All right. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you all next time on Indie Programmer.